Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Cordant and we are going to be starting a new playthrough of Icewind Dale. This is a classic RPG. It's a game that I enjoy quite a bit. I played through it many many years ago. Uh, haven't played it in a while so it's gonna be a semi-blind run. Uh, for those who don't know, Icewind Dale is kind of like a, a less popular cousin of the Baldur's Gate games. Uh, those are my favorite games of all time, by the way. There are playthroughs in the channel as well. They share the same engine, they share the same rule set, I believe. And this is using Beamdog's Enhanced Edition. So it's all pretty with widescreen and zoom and all those things. So, without further ado... We are going to be starting a new game here and I've gone through the trouble of creating the characters I want to take so I'm not going to be using the default ones I'm going to take the ones down here and I'll show you briefly what these characters are in a second We're going to have myself, we're going to have Patricia we're going to have Mr. Jan Janssen a name that may be familiar for some of you. We're gonna have Corgan. We are gonna have Setinhas, which is just arrows in English. And we are gonna have Vaconia. So, familiar names here, Jan Janssen, Corgan, Vaconia. These are just names of characters from Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2. So Vaconia is present in Baldur's Gate 1. The other two are only present in Baldur's Gate 2. So, for a brief description. Myself, Cordant, I'm going to be playing as a sorcerer. In this case, a dragon disciple. And I'm an elf. This is just for tiny min-maxing of being able to have 19 dexterity for some extra armor class. Because dexterity does boost your armor class in these games. 16, which I believe is the max constitution value which caster characters can take advantage of. And then just all around strength at 10, intelligence and wisdom at 12, and charisma, which is my primary stat, at the max, which is 18. We are going to be playing as Chaotic Evil, and that's my character. For Patricia, she is going to be a multi-class fighter cleric. So she's going to be a frontliner dealing damage, buffing up, and also supporting the team. Her roles are quite nice. I enjoy her strength value, which is pretty high. Dexterity and constitution are the maximum values for a dwarf, because she's a dwarf. <laughs> what is it? Ah, it says here, dwarf. Uh, intelligence doesn't really matter for a cleric, so I'm just leaving it at 10. Wisdom, max value, charisma. She's not very charismatic. <laughs> so she stays at 6. She's gonna be neutral evil and that's gonna be one of our frontliners. The other frontliner being Mr. Corgan here and he's pretty much gonna mimic the, the Baldur's Gate 2 version. So he's gonna be a dwarf fighter berserker. He has the max strength score, max dexterity, max constitution and for the rest doesn't really matter. Chaotic evil, just as he was always born to be. And Mr. Jan Janssen, again, just like in Baldur's Gate 2, he's going to be our gnome, chaotic neutral, illusionist thief. So this is the guy who's going to take care of traps, he's going to take care of locked doors, um, perhaps some backstabbing from time to time, although I really doubt it. And he is going to be our support arcane caster, because... Even though at times I do like the idea of having a pure thief, they're not really that useful, you know? Uh, for me, a thief in the party is just someone who can detect traps, detect illusions, uh, open locked doors, all that stuff. But I like it when they have some extra value. So be it a cleric thief or a, a mage thief or a fighter thief. In this case, I went for Illusionist Thief, because I like to have two Arcane Casters in the party. Uh, for him, also pretty simple. Max Dex, Max Con, Max Intelligence, and the rest is kind of irrelevant. So this is just 
Good for mages and thieves. Good for mages. I don't think I need it all this much. I'm not actually sure how shorty bonuses work in Icewind Dale, but in Baldur's Gate, or let's say in other um, infinite engine games, short races get a bonus from constitution to their saving throws. So that's why I like maxing constitution on my shorties. Okay, and then finally we're just missing Vaconia. She is going to be our pure cleric. She's going to be a priest of Talos. So all around buffer, disabler. She's not really going to be doing a lot of damage in this game. I'm not, I'm not expecting it, at least. She actually got a pretty high, high roll, if I remember this correctly. And again, for a dwarf, she's not a, <laughs> she's not a drow, like in Baldur's Gate. She's got max constitution, max wisdom, max dexterity, and then just some strength if I do want her to hit something with a hammer. And the rest is kind of basic. For the last one, I just went with a ranger, an archer. This guy is an elf. He has some pretty high rolls because rangers, um, they have a minimum roll baseline which is pretty high, so I think this is like a 92 or something. And he does have a lot of strength, if I want him to go into melee for some reason. A whole lot of dexterity, which is awesome for archers, obviously. Constitution, same thing, and wisdom, because rangers do get some cleric spells um, further on. Okay, so this is the party I have chosen. So, the, the clear line here is we're gonna have Patricia and Corgan as frontliners. We're gonna have myself and Jan Janssen as arcane casters. Jan is probably gonna be mostly support, and I'm gonna be support and damage. Vaconia for our pure cleric support, also in the back line. And Setinhas can either shoot people from afar, or if needed, go into melee and kill some stuff with the sword. Let's see how this goes. Our tale begins here, in the quiet fishing village of Easthaven, one of the so-called ten towns of Icewind Dale. The tiny community is hardly a town, but rather a collection of ramshackle huts crowded together upon the icy shores of Lech Dinashir. Here, within a dimly lit tavern, a group of travelers sit huddled around a table, swapping tales and making grand plans for the future, completely unaware of the part they are to play in the events that are about to unfold. Yeah, I like his voice. What's this? New face in town, eh? Well met, stranger. The name is Rothgar, originally of Hillsfar. But now, after years of traveling up, down, and under Faerun, I am content to call this town my home. Who might you be? Hmm. So, before we get into the dialogue, one of the things I wanted to notice, because, like I said, I haven't played this game in a while. I'm not sure if this was always like this, or if it's from a recent update, where the UI just looks so tiny, in comparison to what it used to be. But, regardless. Okay, so, new face in town, mm-hmm. Mr. Rothgar. Okay. Well, greetings, Rothgar. My name is Cortant. Nah, this would be too good of an answer. Who I am is none of your concern. A spirited one, eh? I like that. Well, whatever your business in these parts might be, I would offer you this small piece of advice. While you're in my town, you'd do well to be on your best behavior. These folk are under my protection. And anyone who would seek to do harm to them in any way shall answer to me. Hmm. So he's like the mayor? That said, I'll let you get back to your cups. I'm sure you've had a long journey, and you'll find there's no better way to shake off the cold of the road than by downing a few mugs of Grisella's best. Uh, and if you're in need of lodging, I would recommend talking to Quimby over at the Snowdrift Inn over on the east side of town. Equipment and supplies can be purchased next door at Pomab's Emporium. Uh, Pomop's prices are a bit high, even for a Kalashite. But you'd be better off well-equipped and short of coin than the other way around. Ill-prepared travelers don't last long in these parts. Right you are. 
Once you've had a chance to rest up and get your bearings, come by and see me at my house. It's just a couple doors west of here. There's some business I will discuss with you. Farewell. Farewell. One of the things I remember from Icewind Dale is that I really like <clears throat> the, the scenarios. The areas are really well drawn. Yes. I like my, my four tiny people party. <laughs> if I could have a, a tiny so sorcerer, I would. Oh well. <clears throat> okay, so what do we have? We have Grisella. Hildreth Highhammer. Well met. Why, you seem to be like a fresh new vein of ore, all untried and untested. I be Hildreth, should you wish to know. <laughs> Hildreth? Isn't that sort of a feminine name for a burly dwarf warrior? Do you not have your head screwed on straight? I am a female friend. Oh, damn. <laughs> what? But you have a beard. What? Do I not look away? Oh, I see what it is now. Dwarven women have beards, friend. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Say, have you heard any news from around here lately? I'm not all eyes in here, Zier. Mostly I've been keeping to my cups to keep the chill away. But I have heard that a local sword named Rothgar is putting together some sort of expedition. Sounds like it might be some fun. I'll be going all on myself. Oh? What do you know about the expedition? The folks around here say that Rothgar be a valiant man, but not the type to go dashing off to his death. They say he be an excellent leader. We're headed up to the mountains to investigate some sort of disturbance up there. You'd best be talking to Rothgar himself to hear the full story. Okay, so that's what he wants to tell us when we go to his home. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. That's a good idea, I'll go find him now. Farewell. Okay. So I'm guessing this lady just sells drinks. What just happened? Oh, I think I know what happened. So, ah, uh, no, this is not what I want. So if I want to move the camera, but, oops, this goes down, this goes left. Ah, much better. <laughs> I pressed W and it just opened up my, my mage spells. Hello there, dearie. Welcome to the Winter's Cradle Tavern. My name's Grisella. I own and operate this fine establishment. What can I get for you? Mm, how about a drink? A drink? Of course, dearie. After all, this is a tavern. Plenty to drink here. <laughs> mm -hmm, yes, indeed. Well, what do you have? Yes, well, you see, I'm a bit of a <laughs> What? I'm in a bit of a bind right now. I've just run out of everything. I've nothing to offer you in the way of drink at this moment. What the hell? What kind of tavern are you running here? Well, the tavern hasn't run completely dry. I do have some stock down in the cellar, but... Uh, but what? This is rather embarrassing. But I'm having somewhat of a pest problem down in that dirty old cellar, and I'm afraid to go down there. I do so hate bugs. Just the thought of those nasty creepies and crawlies sends shivers down my spine. Hmm. <laughs> Great, a tavern with no booze and bugs to boot. I can't wait to see the rest of this town. Hmm. Look, stranger, up here in East Haven, we may be out of the frontier, maybe out on the frontier, but we do manage to act civilized toward one another. If you can at least try to be polite, then there's the door, Didi. Ah, my apologies. She got offended. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to help with your problem? Ah, oh, that's awfully sweet of you, dearie. But I don't expect you to go into any trouble on my account. I'm sure I'll think of something. This this took a turn. But okay. Ah, this is the paladin answer. Have no fear, madam. No. I could see your pest problem. For a price, of course. Hmm. I suppose I could scrape together a couple of coins as payment for such a service. Let me see. How about five gold? Would that do, dearie? Hmm. It'll do, though it's hardly a fair sum for such a service. Wonderful. 
the stairs of the cellar are in the back room. Now you be careful down there, Didi, and don't let any of those little buggers creep back up here, alright? Okay, so five gold is really nothing, but this is a start. So, yeah. I'll be doing the lead now. Ooh. Okay, so I'm just gonna get things sorted here. I'm gonna have this. So the front line, mid line, and the back line, I, I suppose. Okay. Is that Let's all? see what's going on down here. Oh, so we're gonna jump straight into battle. Okay, so first things first, this is something that I always do, and if any of you are interested in trying these games, this is something I suggest, which is the auto-pause menu. So, when you have a character injured, or an enemy is sighted, a trap is found, and this is personal taste, a spell is cast, I want the game to auto-pause. So that was something that happened here where I entered this room and there were enemies, but the game did not immediately pause. So that's why I wondered. Ah, uh, I actually... I actually Ready. forgot we don't have equipment Watch yet. <laughs> Let's just get out of here. Watch me go. Okay, okay. So we just have some sticks. I mean, it's better than nothing. But it's almost nothing. I'm here. Watch me go. How much gold? I have 640 gold. So like I said, I haven't played this in a long time, so I'm not really sure what happens here. Ah, this is the the guy that sells gear, but it's kind of overpriced. This is the inn, if we want to sleep. What else have we got? Townsperson. Hmm. I want to see if there's something, some place where I can buy gear without it being overpriced. A squirrel. Someday I'm gonna grow up to be an adventurer. Okay, lady. <laughs> Fishmonger. I'm not looking for fish. Thank you. This is just a house, probably Rothgar's house. This looks like a temple of some sort. Yeah, okay, I guess I gotta go to the... To the overpriced guy. To get some gear. And this home, or rather his store is right here. Okay, the map works the same way as in Baldur's Gate. Oh, it says stuff. Old Jed's house, Snowdrift Inn. I'm reading up here, by the way, when I mouse over something. Snowdrift Inn. Okay, the other houses are not tagged. Maybe because I haven't entered them yet? Ah, no, never mind. Pomab's Emporium. Okay. So let's see what this guy is offering. What is it? It shall be done. I'm not sure if it makes a difference to send the most charismatic person to speak, uh, but I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use him. So pull map. What is this? More barbarians come to my shop. No doubt with nothing to barter with, and <laughs> but more wolf pelts and polished stones. Very well. Let us get this over with. What do you want? I'd watch where you wag that tongue of yours, shopkeeper. All this snow hasn't put me in the best of moods. How dare you speak to me in such a manner? Do you know who I am? Yes, you are a pompous little man who runs a little shop in a little town at the arse end of Faerun. <laughs> I am Pomab Az... I... Pomab Ak Azmir. Royal diplomatic envoy of Kalimshan and appointed overseer of the northern caravan routes. Ah, oh I see. Your appearance as a lowly shopkeeper is just a clever disguise to throw off any would-be assassins, am I right? Your poor attempt at sarcasm is an obvious sign of your lowly birth. I'll have you know that I am third cousin to the Pasha himself. 
Not to mention a royal courtier in good standing. Ah, yes, I see. If you are in such good standings in Kalimshan, then what in the Nine Hells are you doing all the way up here in Icewind Dale? The Pasha uh, asked me to accept this post of overseer of the Northern Caravan Routes as a personal favor. Hmm, I see. Oh, you mean you were banished? I would not expect someone of your station to understand such matters. Now, if you do not mind, buy something or leave. Fine, what do you have for sale? Uh, map is just going to the right, okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have some armor. Some helmets. The helmets are kind of crucial. Is there a difference between these two? No, it's just swag, I guess. Okay. So, an overpriced katana. A two-handed axe. Ooh, <clears throat> I like this. I like that this is available so soon. In Bulger's Gate, we have to struggle a while for this. <clears throat> so let me just freshen up on what my characters actually like doing. So, where can I see my proficiencies? Uh, not here. Here? No. Maybe here? Ah, okay. So, she is good with flails and morning stars, and she can either use two weapons or a sword and a shield. You don't really matter because you're a cleric. You are on long bows. I think you are on short bows, right? Yeah, short bow and short sword, and I am on slings. And Corgan is on axes and two-handed weapon style. Okay, so now I have an idea of what I actually service. want to I purchase. See. So I will want one, two, three. <clears throat> I actually want four helmets for my, my four people who can wear them. I'm going to look at the armor in a bit. <clears throat> so I would like to have... A large shield, a medium shield, and then is it? No, this is a war hammer. So I want a flail. I want a two-handed axe. Uh, Vaconia use, uses maces, and then I need a longbow, a sling. And the short bow. Okay, let's buy all of this and see how we how we stand. So you use this. You use this. Okay, so everybody has a helmet. Now my fighter cleric is gonna have the heavy shield. My cleric is gonna have the medium shield. Corgan is gonna be using two-handed axe. Ah, okay. It, it looks like an halberd. The model is a halberd, but it is an axe. <laughs> the flail is gonna go to Patricia. She's got a pink shield and everything. <laughs> I know she would love it. And you have the mace and shield. The composite longbow is gonna go for our friend here. And the short bow for our halfling. And the sling to myself. Now, what we are missing is, first of all, ammunition. So I need arrows. So 40, let's take... So this is 80, 160. Sure. Uh, let's buy it like this. Okay. I need bullets. Mm -hmm. And now we are missing armor. <clears throat> the armor is going to be tough because it's 
It's kind of expensive. I think I'm gonna go with a splint mill for Corgan. And then maybe just gonna go with studded leather for the rest of my people because I don't have any more money. So 216, I can purchase three. No, only two. Okay. So we're gonna buy all of this. Corgan can take this, you can take this, and you can take this. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna buy one leather armor. I'm gonna give it to Vicky. <clears throat> And now at least we are kind of set up. Ammunition on all my friends, myself included. This is a potion bag, this is a gem bag, this is a scroll case. So this is how I like it to be. Okay, and we are ready for battle. There you go. Not a problem. Let's let's get those five gold. <laughs> or die trying. Right I actually yeah. want my ranger to have a I melee weapon as a backup. As okay, <clears throat> so. I uh, I'm not sure how tough these Ready things pie. are. Hopefully not a lot. Otherwise I'll just use some stuff. Some spells on them. Hmm. So I'm just setting up some shortcuts here. This is something that again, if you guys are interested in playing the game, this is very useful. It it goes unnoticed for a long time, trust me. <laughs> Ready. I suppose I got some But time it's to it's kill. a really nice to have. Here I think I'm just gonna do it like this. It doesn't really matter a lot. And for Patricia, I want you with this and this. Okay. I await your so, instructions. I'm here. Let's fight. Yes. Uh -huh. What, what is it? What let's see how this goes. Ah, no. I'm gonna have to go on a killing spree. So this is something that the enhanced edition does, and I really dislike it. So, <laughs> sorry, but I'm just gonna take this away. And oh, I want this. I don't like rolling for HP. Um. Oh god, this is so, so tiny. Insane, all opponents do double damage. Let's let's keep it at core. For now, because I don't really remember the game. Don't melee after depleting one ammo stack. Where do I disable... The... Ah, this. Show health bars. I do not like that. Okay, so I have my HP here, and I prefer to do this, and it's telling me if it's uninjured or not. Mm -hmm. They appear to be quite weak. This is kind of like just a tutorial, so I think we're more than fine. Yeah, we are. Yeah! Great victory for our first battle. Let's go claim... Dead five gold. Easy as goblin pie. Easy as goblin pie. Any luck getting rid of those nasty bugs, dearie? My customers are getting really thirsty. It is done. Yeah, they're dead. Now hand over the coins. Thank you, dearie. You're a lifesaver. Just do me one more favor. Keep this little bug problem between you and me. I don't want folks thinking Griselis' place isn't clean. Run along now. 1200 experience is not bad. Okay. So that's done. Easy as goblin. I kind of want to get an additional weapon here. I if I have the money for it, of course. Come on, go in. What is it? Um, yes. And even though I like the the party to look like this, now nah, I'm gonna keep it like this. Never mind. I was gonna say I was gonna pull myself to the top, but no. 
I'm ready to do adventure in okay, so this yeah, guy... Stuff. I had him stay with long swords, scimitars, ninja toes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So let's see if we can buy some weapons for him. What's better, by the way? Hide? Armor class 6. Armor class 8. But this one is bad at this. Hmm. I think we're fine for now. Uh, it's really expensive. I mean, I can... At least I can buy a short sword for Mr. Jan Janssen. There you go, Jan. Be happy. <clears throat> we have no more gold. So now we are gonna speak to Mr. Rothgar, because I think that's our quest. Uh, how does this work again? What? So the other party arrived in the snowy lakefront community known as East Haven. Weary and half frozen from the road, we hastily made our way into the local tavern to find a hot meal and some friendly conversation. Scarcely had we seated ourselves at the table by the hearth when we were approached by a burly warrior who called himself Rothgar. He seemed friendly enough, but something in his eyes warned us that he wasn't one to cross. He politely asked us to come see him at his home, a couple of doors west to the tavern, of the tavern, to discuss business of some sort. Okay, so... I figured that this is the house. Let's see if it is. Ooh, pretty. Oh, okay, it is. So, another helpful tip for those of you who might be new: you can drag the the console, the log, just by grabbing the top here and moving it. That's something you can do. Easy as goblin pie. And we have some stuff here which may be interesting. What's it to be? Done. Go check done. this out. <clears throat> this is to detect traps. So we're just seeing if there's something over here. Although I'm not gonna attempt opening any of these things because Mr. Jan here is not that proficient yet at finding traps. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna risk it, losing someone already. And another thing you can, you can and should do with each of your characters is go into the script tab. This is simply something where you can customize how you want your characters to act. And in this case, oh, this is different from the one I have in Bulge's Gate. So I want an option for my thieves to detect traps when they are idle. Thief scout. The scout thief will try to stay hidden. Okay, no. Adventure. The thief will constantly and to the exclusion of all else search for traps. If attacked, the thief ignores enemies and... God. Control. The skills will allow a thief to either use his fine trap skill or his hide in shadows skill whenever he is idle. By default, the thief will search for traps when there are no enemies nearby. Pressing the D key toggles this setting and... Ah, oh, God. I have D toggled to something already. Well, <clears throat> let's see how this goes. We're going to have him like this. Uh, we're gonna have Mr. Setinges here as a ranged attacker. So the character will attack any enemy when he sees them with the missile weapon he is most proficient with. The character will try to keep his distance from enemies, but if he's attacked in melee combat, he will switch to melee weapon. I think I'll just have him in, st in standard attack. Because my fear is that if you put him with this, he's gonna automatically move away from fights. And I wanna be in charge of that. So, standard attack for you, <clears throat> Corgan, also standard attack, he's a fighter, so there's not much to say there. Uh, you are also going to be in standard attack. You, I actually want you without anything. I don't want you to do anything. Because as a cleric, I don't want her to immediately go into a fight if I don't want her to. 
And as for myself, I also am gonna stay at none. I'm here. Okay. Jordan. Now let's see hmm. yes. what this friend wants. Well met, friend, and welcome to my home. Make yourselves comfortable, but try not to break anything. Many of these curiosities that you see lying about have sentimental value. Man, his voice is is so familiar for some reason. And just looking at, at what we have here, this is the skin of something. Not sure what. This definitely looks like a minotaur. And this looks like a, a mind flare head. Which would be funny. If this guy can deal with mind flares, I'm not gonna try and attack him. Um, okay. You have quite a collection here. Yes, indeed you do. Oh, they're all remembrances of my adventuring days. Little trinkets and the like that I picked up here and there. More keepsakes than valuables, really. Leftovers from my days of fortune and glory. Adventuring days? So you are retired then? Uh, Semi-retired, actually. This region is still untamed and fraught with many dangers. I have had plenty of opportunities in the last few years to take up my sword and shield and do battle with those who threaten the safety of East Haven and its neighbors. In mm. fact, I am planning such an expedition right now. That is what I wanted to speak to you about. Okay, what sort of expedition? We've received word from Kaldahar, our neighbors to the south, that evil forces are stirring nearby in the spine of the World Mountains. I am organizing and leading a party from East Haven south to Kaldahar Valley to investigate. You look to be capable enough. Perhaps you'd like to join us. What say you? Hmm. Sure. Sounds exciting. Count us in. Excellent. Glad to have you on board. I plan to assemble the rest of the expedition and set out for Kaldahar within a few days. I don't even care what it is. <laughs> I just want to kill stuff. With storms brewing in the mountains, I'd rather we depart sooner. But there are matters that require my attention here about town. Ah, uh, okay. So we're not leaving yet. Okay, so what sort of matters? Perhaps we could help? Actually, now that I think about it, maybe you can help. Uh, Poma, the local shopkeeper, has recently expressed concern over the rapidly thinning stock of his store. That pompous creep. He's been complaining that the regular caravan from Care Dineval is long overdue, and that if they don't arrive soon, he's sure to be out of business. Mm. Now, normally I take Pomop's whining with a grain of salt, but with heavy snows on the way. It would be best to make sure that caravan makes it through. Okay. So what is it you want me to do? I want you to find that caravan. Leave town by way of the South Bridge and scout the hills west of Loch Dinnershire, between East Haven and Caer Dineval. Caravans always stick close to the shoreline this time of year. Once you find it, see the caravan safely to East Haven. In the meantime, I'll assemble the rest of the expedition and make the final plans for our journey. Return here as quickly as you can. We must make for Kaldahar Pass while the weather is favorable. Good luck. Safe journey. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, apparently Rothgard asked us to find a missing caravan out of Caer Dineval. The caravan was carrying valuable supplies intended for East Haven. Rothgard suggested we take the south bridge out of town and search for the caravan in the hills along the shores of Loch Dinashir. We are to return to East Haven and to Rothgar, either with the caravan or with news of its mysterious fate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jordan. And I'm not sure if, if, if you guys like it or if it's useful that I kind of describe the things that are on the screen that I'm doing since this is like the first episode. But in any case, if anybody's new, by pressing this button, this simply selects my entire party. Yes. So if I just have myself selected and I want to pick up everyone, I can just do this. I of course, it's easier. But if, before? let's say, you have one guy over there and you can't really see him all that well, you can just press mm -hmm. this and everybody gets selected. Not a problem. So that, that's why. Uh, okay, so yeah, the D button is gonna ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. Okay, I'm just gonna change his script. Um, uh, so there was uh, this one ignoring enemies is really really bad. So I I guess I'm just gonna go for the standard attack and I'll try and control the fine traps when I can. Aye. Okay, Aye. Uh, so. 
Let's no head problem. out. And given that we did 40 minutes, I think this is a Ready. good place to stop our first episode. Um, so we got a feel for our party, we got some gear for our adventures, we even managed to defeat four very powerful enemies in the, <laughs> in the tavern for the massive reward of five gold. Um, but yeah, so we now have a plan, we have a quest from Mr. Roth from Mr. Rothgar. Everybody's equipped. And what we're gonna do in the next episode is just see if there's anything else of interest in this area of the town. And then, as suggested, we're gonna move out via the South Bridge and see what we can find in terms of the missing caravan. So, as always guys, I wanna thank you all for being here on the channel, watching some Icewind Dale with me. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you only know Baldur's Gate, you haven't really checked out Icewind Dale, I really do suggest that you do so, because it's a very good game also. It's different in several aspects. I do prefer Baldur's Gate to Icewind Dale, but this one can stand on its own quite well. So if you guys have any questions, any suggestions, leave a comment. Um, if you want to see more videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.